down. Yeah. Oh, now I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, I, I filtered mine today because the room behind me is a mess. And I can tell where Phil is right away. <laughs> your favorite, your favorite hidey hole. Fake covers. Mm-hmm. Are they? <laughs> I don't have a dog, but I have a cat that wants to be fed this time of day. So you may hear All right. some meowing. Well, what would we do without our little tiny family members, eh? Yeah, I couldn't even do it at home. I have a Maltese that won't shut up. <laughs> yap, yap, yap. Yeah, I've got a Pomeranian you'll probably hear back here too, so. Um, you, will all, you will all know when my dog's hungry. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm looking for Scott. Scott doesn't have a face up. Are, is everybody here? Are we pretty much all? Scott's here. Yeah, yeah. he stays in the background. So yeah. I don't blame him. Um, it is four o'clock and let's see. Lee, there you are. I see you on my screen now. I just wanted to make sure we had everybody in the room together. And if that is the case, I'm going to call the meeting of the Manzanita Planning Commission to order. This is our first meeting of the new year. And um, before we do the new commissioner introductions, I thought it would be helpful um, if the old commissioners would also introduce themselves in case yes. um, someone has not met them before or doesn't know the background or whatever. So I'll start with myself. I don't want to put anybody on the spot before, before me, but um, I am so old. I've been a member of the Planning Commission since either 2006 or 2007. I don't know where my original appointment letter went, so um, I, I can't really date myself to um, pin myself to a particular date. But I've been around for a while. Um, my name is Karen Reddick Yurka. I'm the, the current chair. That will be changing today. Um, and I came to this commission at the invitation of um, Mayor Hugh McIsaac a million years ago. And um, he was really interested in having uh, the city take a look at design review standards for the commercial district to ensure that we kept the village field, what, you know, however you define the word village. Um, and so he invited me to join the commission to help with that process. Um, and uh, it was interesting and delightful and I liked it. So I'm still here. I came into this um, through, I have a pretty good background in real estate. Um, I managed a real estate office many, too many years ago. Um, and I was responsible for the uh, escrow closings and making sure that everything was, all the I's were dotted and the T's were I's were dotted, T's were crossed. Uh, and then I went from there to a law firm and I worked at Stoll Reeves in the real estate section as a paralegal for quite a few years. And there I learned all kinds of stuff, um, a lot of it arcane that we don't need to go into, but I, I've pretty much got a lifelong interest in real estate and a particular love and affection for Manzanita. So that is why um, I'm on the commission. Um, Lee or Phil, do you want to wrestle to see who comes up next? Sure, Karen, I will. That's a really hard act to follow, though. She uh, supplied us with a resume. Uh, <laughs> um, my name is Lee Hilton Brand. I've been on the Planning Commission for four years, and I had a really hard act to follow with uh, the person whose place I took, who, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Karen, was the longest acting Planning Commissioner um, 30 years, 32 years, something like that. So we miss Owen's uh, expertise and understanding of our ordinances. Uh, and we do our best to, uh, we do our best to do the research necessary to do the work. Uh, my background is numerous, but um, Besides being a building contractor, I was also in the regulatory end of things with the city of Portland. So that's about it for me. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy we have some new faces. And I'm sure that you'll bring a good energy and exuberance to what we do. 
My name is Phil Mannon, and I forget the year that I came on. I was during the Gary Bullard administration. Uh, my background is uh, I had two and a half years of architecture at the University of Oregon, graduated in business and construction, went to work for my father in his business, which was a supplier of building materials and also being a subcontractor to general contractors. Uh, continued on with my own firm for six years and then went to work for a competitor of mine and finished out my career with uh, 22 years uh, working with that organization. Uh, my wife and I uh, decided early on in our marriage that we wanted to have exposure to the beach and have a place uh, somewhere on the coast. We took our one and a half year old in the car and started touring spots from Lincoln City up through Warrington and decided on Manzanita because at that time it was the only place that we could uh, build. Uh, most of the other areas had a uh, moratorium on uh, development due to uh, drainage issues. <laughs> Uh, took us 13 years to build it. We built most of it ourselves. And uh, then in 2007, we remodeled and added on, and we are enjoying our stay here in Manzanita. We hope it lasts for at least a couple more years. Um, that's great. Um, I'm just going to point to the people who are lined up on my screen. And Frank, you are first. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, it's a pleasure to be serving on the commission. So thank you very much for that. Uh, my name is Frank Squillo, and um, my husband and I own Wanda's Cafe and Bakery in Nahalem. We moved to Manzanita in uh, the very end of 2018 and have lived here since. We're in the, uh, uh, what's the area called? The uh, the Urban Growth Foundry. Oh, yeah, thank you. Urban Growth Foundry. <laughs> UGB uh, area uh, at where we are. Uh, my background, though, is primarily uh, that of media background. I did radio and television for, well, I started in 1980. So however many years that was until I retired from that, uh, hosted morning radio shows, worked for Warner Brothers Television for a while, did a syndicated national television dating show and would travel back and forth from Los Angeles to Dallas when I was doing that. Uh, I worked in New York, Philadelphia, some of the big cities, was on a planning commission in Dallas for our, uh, Dallas was such a big city, they broke it down into regional neighborhoods. And so I was on the planning commission for that uh, in, uh, in our neighborhood, the Oakland area of Dallas. And that was a fun experience. Uh, so I look forward to helping out the best I can here. Thank you, um, Mr. Christ. Like Hello, uh, I'm Tom. Uh, I'm a lawyer in Portland, been practicing about 40 years, and, and we'll get it right yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm also uh, a part-time judge. Uh, my wife and I started coming to Manzanita maybe 30 years ago when the kids were little, and we won a vacation through a school auction and fell in love with the place and have been coming every year, sometimes twice since then. And when those kids grew up and were finally uh, out of school, uh, we decided to buy a place here um, four years ago and hope to move here full time when we eventually retire full time. Uh, we both like to be active and engaged in the community, and we've done that in Portland. I was a longtime president of my neighborhood association. Um, I don't have any background in planning, um, but I'm very interested in the concept of planning to make the communities we live in better. Uh, I've also in recent years gotten very interested in housing issues. Um, and so that would, that sparked my interest in getting involved in, in this commission. Um, 
and I'm I'm eager to do that and and to to be engaged and happy to be here. Thanks for for appointing me. And Mr. Collier. I guess I'm Not next. Uh, John Collier. I came to Manzanita similar to the way Phil did. I started uh, driving up and down the Oregon coast 30 years ago, and about a dozen years ago, I uh, I moved from Southern California to Washington and <laughs> continued to go up and down the Oregon coast and ultimately landed in Manzanita for mostly the same reason that the rest of you did. Um, I've lived here full time since I believe late 2016 or now well, I think it was late 2016, uh, possibly early 2017. Anyway, um, my background is <clears throat> design and planning. I'm an architect, um, have done large buildings and campuses for 30 years, 40 years. Um, I've been licensed in a dozen states, including Oregon at one time. Um, I'm no longer licensed in Oregon. Since I retired, I let all but one of my architectural licenses lapse, and that was because it was the easiest and cheapest to keep. So I can continue to call myself an architect. Um, uh, I am interested in pretty much uh, housing and our managed growth, and I am excited about being on the uh, Planning Commission and looking forward to working with uh, the rest of you people. Thank you very much. Well, welcome, all of you, old and new. Um, I believe uh, Mayor Deborah Simmons had some comments she wanted to make. Yes, I uh, want to welcome you to the Planning Commission if you're new and thank uh, Lee and Phil for your years of service. Um, I am learning that volunteering uh, to give back to your city is with a capital V and it takes a lot of time and energy. Um, you, the Planning Commission, are the checks and balance for our community and for our council. So. Uh, looking at the big picture long term is what we're going to be depending on you to do. You have a big job ahead of you. I know Karen's got a long list of things that need attention. And um, I just want to thank Karen for her uh, dedication to the commission. Um, and also um, keep us keep us in, in, in your hearts. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much for serving. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Maybe, Karen, I can also take a moment to introduce myself and my role uh, on the commission, too. Awesome. Great. And thank you, Mayor. Uh, I know that uh, probably everyone here appreciates the capital V comment, especially you. Um, it's a big job. But uh, as many of you know, I've met some of you and not all of you, but I'm Layla Aman. I'm the city manager, but I also play the role as planning director uh, for the city. So just kind of quickly, I do have a background in planning. In fact, Frank, I worked on Forward Dallas, um, which is the Dallas Comprehensive Plan back in my early years of work. Um, but I have a master's degree from Cornell in urban and regional planning, and I've spent the majority of my career working in community development, doing long range planning as well as current planning. Uh, so my role here is really sort of um, managing kind of the staff side, of the land use process and Karen's going to kind of go over um, that part of it. I ultimately sign off on all of the staff reports and recommendations that get put forward uh, to the planning commission in my role as the planning director. So I look forward to working with this group, appreciate the hard work and effort that went into uh, the appointment process and feel like we've got a solid team to work us through probably some of the biggest work the city's done in um, 30 years, and I, I don't think that's an exaggeration. So thanks for that. Uh, thank you. We appreciate you too. Um, one of the first things that we need to do, uh, since this is the first 
meeting of the new year is elect officers according to our um, planning commission ordinance. We um, elect a president and a vice president, although somehow the terms have been chair and vice chair for a really long time. Um, <clears throat> so um, that's a little discussion among the planning commission members that we need to, to have and take a take a quick vote. Um, anybody want to put yourselves forward for a chair or vice chair? I would do vice chair, but I don't think I could uh, quite capable of of being the chair. Uh, if you need a vice chair, I would be willing to do that. But uh, with such you know little experience at this point, uh, that would be more than anything. Uh, and if somebody else would like to be the vice chair, I'm okay with that too. Okay, thank Karen, you. Karen, yeah. Are you interested in in remaining in the position? Yeah, I I certainly I would be happy to continue. Um, I just didn't want to squelch anybody else's deep seated desire to be in charge of the commission. <laughs> I I don't have that desire, but I would happily nominate you to remain as chair and Frank to become the vice chair. Then I'll second Unless that. Any. Any further discussion? Lee, do you want to throw your hat in the ring? Well, I'm very pleased with both of those. I, As you know, I've been vice chair for a couple of years and um, have some impediments right now that um, where I don't, why don't, I really don't want to assume that role again. So Frank, you got my vote. I oh, appreciate more, that, thank you. <laughs> more importantly, uh, Karen, you have done a fantastic job. I've watched you through many difficult situations, and I would be really pleased uh, to continue to support you as chair. So, thank, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? Any Anyone else want to throw their hat in the ring? Um, then I would call a vote. Was Did we have an actual motion? I thought I, I moved. moved. You did. Yeah. You, you did. Thank you. I don't know if there was a second. There was. Second second. Seconded. There was. Okay. Um, any further discussion? It's been moved and seconded to for me to continue as chair slash president and Frank as vice chair slash vice president. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the confidence. Uh, okay, the next thing um, is, <laughs> there's that dog we've been hearing about. Um, we have uh, the minutes from the November 21st, 2022 meeting. Um, we didn't meet in December and our January meeting was um, canceled. So we need to go back and review the minutes from November 2021, 2022. Our three new members weren't on the commission at that time, and I would not expect you to um, need to vote, <laughs> but the three remaining isn't quite a consensus. So I would, or, you know, a quorum. Um, Layla, can we do a motion by consensus? to approve the minutes, assuming that there aren't any changes? I think so, yeah. It's it's kind of new. Yeah, and motion by consensus because? Well, because I wouldn't expect um, the three new members to vote on something that they weren't present for. Oh, that's actually kind of a common thing that happens in, you know, because terms shift over. So what the uh, folks that didn't weren't here for those meetings can still approve the minutes um, in that case, because you're relying on kind of the, the remaining members sort of memory of that. So it's OK to vote on. The, uh, and I might be mucking up my explanation of that. I'm really sorry, but I do know it's okay to vote on the minutes, even if you weren't present at the last meeting. Okay. Great. Um, so okay. before before we do that, uh, are there any additions, corrections, subtractions that need to come from the minutes? Uh, Karen, I have a question for Scott. Scott, I can assume that um, 
being as you approve the permit for the transfer station, that the plot plan to scale was submitted? Yes, it should have been in the package to scale. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's the only thing I have, Karen. Okay, Bill, did you notice anything? No, I did not. Okay, I would hear a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. So moved. Uh, is second. there a second? Okay. Second. Uh, assuming no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. All right. Um, the next item um, is the appointment of a uh, member to the Planning Commission Selection Committee. And I believe Jenna uh, Edgington from the City Council wanted to do some uh, comments on that. Oh, I wasn't sure I was sharing. Um, I, I'm sorry, did, I, I assumed you <laughs> wanted to. Oh, no, we're all good. So at the last um, city council meeting, uh, we appointed myself and Brad Merrily as the two city councilors to represent on the planning commission selection committee. And um, I recommended that we ask, instead of appointing someone from the planning commission, that we ask that the planning commission appoint with them amongst themselves, um, either Lee, Karen, or Phil uh, to uh, join us in the process. And what, what's the time commitment that you would time expect? commitment? Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, so we will meet. The selection committee will meet um, before the next uh, city council meeting. So before April fifth, I believe is our next meeting. We will go over the criteria that has been set. It can be revised. So we'll go over that. Um, in a quick meeting amongst ourselves, we'll present that to city council for approval, and then applications will be posted for the planning commission um, right after that um, for three weeks. And then we will conduct our interview, hopefully in that fourth week, um, make our uh, selections of, of shortlist, I guess, qualified, and then that will be presented to the mayor. So we will have um, probably two short meetings, one, one next week, one um, before our interviews, and then a, a day of interviews, depending on how many people apply for the position. And that day of interviews, you would expect to be near the end of April? Is that? Yes. I'm following the time timeline well enough? Yes. Okay. Um, who would like to put him or herself forward for that? I'd like to do that, Karen. Would you? Okay. Yes. Frank? Uh, Frank, I'm sorry, Phil. I'm looking at Phil saying Frank. <laughs> Phil, do you uh, have any objection? Would you like to? Would you like uh, to no, I have a, already a commitment with the short-term rental committee, so um, I support Lee. Okay. Okay. Um, I would be happy to support Lee as well. Um, do we do we need to take a vote? Is that something we need to vote on or can we just by consensus? Can I have a quick question. Are sure. we all voting on Lee or is it just the three of you voting on Lee? I didn't, Jenna, I didn't understand how that worked. Uh, I don't, I, actually, Layla, I'm, I'm not sure or, if we need a vote. Just... Or Layla, yeah. I think consensus and all of your input would be helpful. I think what I heard was Jenna saying that they were hopeful that it would be one of the commissioners that's served for a little while to be on that committee. I think, but I, I think, think I think we would value consensus of the entire commission. Mm -hmm. I think Lee will do a great job. Yeah. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, can we agree that Lee is the best person for the job? I would just raise a, raise a hand. I'm in. Without an Lee. actual an actual vote call. Thank you, Lee. I appreciate you, your willingness okay. to add Thank one you. more one more thing to your list of things that you do. Um, okay. So we have a little PC 101. Layla, did you want to say anything? I've got I've got some things I'd like to say. 
Well, I'll let you kind of take the reins, Karen, I guess just briefly, um, which is to say, I know that I think all of you signed up for the training tomorrow. Is that right? So thank Wednesday. you for, for making time to do Wednesday. that. Wednesday? Uh, I hope it's Wednesday. So or Wednesday. I. Sorry. Whenever the date was. <laughs> Sorry. You all yes. signed up for the training, whatever that is. I think um, Phil, but Phil thank you for not. doing that. What's that? Uh, Phil's raising a hand. Do we have uh, any connection information with regards to getting onto that meeting? I have I haven't received it to my knowledge. Bill, we're we're supposed to receive an email tomorrow. So if you don't receive something by the end of the day, shoot me an email and we'll get that worked out uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, okay. Uh, we're gonna be out of town, but uh, I'll try and make that work. Thank you. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to send everybody emails with the login information. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. Bill, um, let me know if if you don't get it before the end of the day tomorrow, and I'll make sure that we connect somehow wherever you are so that you're able to participate. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, you're welcome. Has anyone gotten it? Because I haven't either, so. I have not. Okay, so they'll all, everybody gets it tomorrow then. All right. Yeah. I think that's it, our um, understanding and do feel free to reach out to staff. So Scott's kind of your key point person for staff. Um, so feel free to reach out to him or he'll reach out to you if, if you don't get it. But I think that training will set a really solid foundation for all of you. And I know Karen wanted to kind of go through sort of how we do things here. Um, I did want to say that, uh, you know, since I've been here, the city has really started to develop some, um, pretty clear processes, uh, both internally and um, with the planning commission. So I feel like we've started to really run uh, a lot smoother uh, than we have in the past, but we're also in the midst of a lot of change. So I think it's been mentioned, but the comprehensive plan update is a really big element of the work that you will be participating in. Um, and so that work itself is you kind of have two levels of planning that you deal with as planning commissioners. You have your responsibilities to deal with current planning, right? So those are land use applications that will be coming in um, and you'll be asked a specific um, question about a series of finding a criteria. Uh, so that's kind of the what we call the current planning side of things. And so you'll be making decisions based on that. And Karen will talk a little bit about how that works. But you're also going to be working uh, with the city, uh, leading the effort towards the long range side of things. So developing an updated comprehensive plan and then the enabling documents that go with that. So updating the zoning code themselves. So as a planning commission, you're going to be working at all levels of, of work uh, from the comprehensive plan to the regulatory framework to the project level uh, um, things. So you're gonna be exposed to all kinds of aspects of the planning process. So as we go through this, staff will be trying to find resources for you so that you can hone in on your skills. Um, you're always welcome to, to reach out to us if you have ideas about ways that you can expand your um, knowledge base so that we can help make you successful. Um, so with that, Karen, I'll, I'll shoot it over to you. And okay. I'm here too, if anybody has any questions. Okay. Um, we, Karen, uh, yeah. Karen, excuse me. Um, you know, we all introduced ourselves, but for the sake of the new members of the commission, it uh, might be nice for them to know how Scott fits into the, into the wheel. Okay. Sure. That, yeah, that's that. no small cog to forget. Scott, pull yourself up here. So Scott, was promoted into the development services manager position. I'll let him talk a little bit about himself because he loves talking about himself. <laughs> um, but Scott is a certified building official, residential. So Scott performs all of the city's residential inspections and coordinates all the city's uh, commercial inspections. And then he's really an instrumental part of our planning division. So Scott actually is the person that intakes all of the applications runs them through me and then our contract planner is not here today because we're not yet officially under contract or this close. Uh, so Scott Freganesi will be with us next month. Uh, but Scott really is um, the kind of uh, the manager of the, the department effectively. Um, so Scott, do you want to jump in and 
talk a little bit about yourself and your role uh, with the department. I don't even know what to say. You said it all. Um, the, the most important thing to remember is if you have a complaint, clarify which Scott you're talking about. Because <laughs> uh, our contract planner, his name is also Scott. Um, <clears throat> so my job is I, I do a lot of the legwork, the phone calls, answering emails back and forth with the applicant before it even gets to you um, and put together the processes working with Layla of what we need to bring to you. And like she said, we've worked on a lot of the processes over the last almost two years now uh, and trying to clean them up so that it's a lot easier for the applicant. Um, and then by the time we bring it to you, hopefully our next, from now forward, it'll be a lot smoother. Um, and, and like Layla said, reach out to us, email it if, is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, and I think everybody should have, based on the last email, my direct email, which is not the building one. Uh, don't use that one for planning commission questions. So that, that's the best way. Since I'm in and out of the office all day, I, I can't always answer my phone because I'm meeting with builders or homeowners to go over some stuff. So feel free to reach out. And if you have any questions, I, I'm happy to answer them. Yep, Scott is the great coordinator of the schedules, which is no small <laughs> task. <laughs> it, it's, it's a large job. And, yeah. and I'm hoping to turn some of that over to Chris Bird, who, who's my permit and planning tech. Uh, but it's it's a lot to, to drop in his lap. Even yeah. though he's been here almost a year, there, there's a lot of timelines and deadlines that we have to meet. So I still manage the calendar. Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the deadlines. Um, that is one of the things that we're constantly bu bumping up against um, in the planning world. And that is, you know, given the statewide land use laws and regulations, um, we have to meet, uh, we have to meet certain deadlines as an application comes in. We have to make sure that um, the applicant gets a decision within 90 day framework from when the it's 120 days from 120 days. 120? Letter, okay. of, letter of completeness we have 120 days yeah. and that includes appeal time so if somebody appeals you know we can't push up to 110 days and and have you know a lot of time to make a decision yeah yeah that's a really important point to make is that the decision needs to be made and issued within 120 days including any appeals as scott said so we would never want a decision to linger too long in planning commission because then if it is appealed we may not have enough time for it to be appealed to city council so staff will always be mindful of that and reminding the commission if in fact you know hearings are continued um, part of our job is to manage that timeline yeah. we we yeah. do have instances not i wouldn't say fairly reg often but fairly regularly where um, an applicant um, needs to come back with more information or we don't have um, don't feel like we've been able to hear the entire um application give it due um credit so we do come back sometimes we continue a hearing um and in those cases it's really hard on staff to do this but it's kind of preferable to try to squeeze an extra meeting in between our action you know, between our normal monthly meeting times so that we don't bump into that 120 day um decision making that's, process that's yeah. part of our process that we're working on karen to mm -hmm hopefully give you enough information, the, the commission enough information it, during the first meeting. And if something further needs to be brought from the applicant, then we can process that. But our, our goal is to eliminate the need to come back on a second meeting. Yeah. Sometimes they're just too complex. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, can sir. I make a quick point? Yep. Just from my experience, um, really that whole schedule thing is kind of in staff's lap because they they need to determine the order or the completeness of an application mm -hmm. and if you know you saddle with the planning commission with asking more questions then um you know we're kind of behind the eight balls so i 
I think it wouldn't hurt for us to have some sort of, I hate to say checklist, but I, I, I've, in other uh, jurisdictions, there's been criteria for completeness. Um, and I don't know that we have such a thing. And if we do, um, yes. Scott can probably point it out to me um, or Layla. Um, but, um, you know, I, I've John. seen that, I've seen that by planning commissions in the butt before, and it almost always mm -hmm. comes down to the, the, uh, initial application. Right. So John, the determination for completeness is based on what's, what they are required to bring to, to us, uh, and it's written in the zoning ordinance based on the application. Is, are they all the same? No, uh, Scott, or did, did they? It, it varies. Um, so a, a, a design review for a commercial building is going to have different requirements than a plan development. Um, okay, maybe maybe you or or Chris can kind of. Oh, maybe it'll come up in the uh, training session on Wednesday. Um, it may, but it may, it may be you and I might need to sit down and go through the different types of applications and it'll, it'll show you. The yeah, we could probably, it, I would we could probably it, hash that out in 15 minutes of good conversations. So. I would strongly recommend going through the zoning ordinance because it bounces around and it'll, you have different sections to look at for different reviews. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I would say that's, that's critical. But the, the other thing is, is that the staff report that comes to us lists all of the applicable, applicable code sections that we need to look at and then lists whether that criteria, that criteria under that code section have been met. So does, we get a really thorough staff report. Does staff typically give a preliminary report to the commission? No, we no. get a, a report. We don't get it until it's final. Okay. Till, till hearing time. Yeah. Okay. There have been instances in the past where uh, a developer, you know, maybe wanting to do a large project will come to the planning commission and ask for what do you, hey, what do you think about this? Um, it costs them money to do that because mm -hmm. staff has to prepare for that um, just like any other uh, application, but it's kind of like a pre-application. How does this yep. feel? Yep. And um, it's a really good opportunity for the public to let that developer know what they think about what's you know going to go in right down the road for me. And that's been very helpful in the past. It's, but um, I don't, I don't know if that we have anything. It's hard to say until the next big thing comes along whether whether the applicant will request a a pre-application hearing. Yeah. I think the pre ops a great idea. I've, yeah. Yeah. I've seen that work really well through the years. Um, the, did, Tom, did you have something you wanted to, to add? Yeah, I, two questions. Uh, when you say the appeal time is included, you mean an appeal to the city council or, or yeah. one to, to Luba beyond that? Council. City, city council. council. Okay. And is that 120 day deadline waivable by the applicant? It is. Is that something they can happen? extend it? Um, it happens often. So if it's something to the effect of, you know, planning commission might be wanting additional information, not necessarily that staff left it out, but that they feel like they need more than what's been offered. Um, they're oftentimes open to tolling the clock to allow for that additional time. Um, it isn't always the case, but my experience, seven, eight times out of 10, they're willing to do that. Oft, sometimes they may want to have the planning commission kind of that's what the timeline set there for is to sort of push a decision. So sometimes it may be in their interest not to do so. Okay. Okay. So um, that's a good different point. Thanks. Um, the... Um, our comprehensive plan um, calls for a citizen involvement commission under LCDC goal one, and that is to make sure that <clears throat> um, local control over land use matters um, 
is maintained. And so the Planning Commission has been designated as the Citizen Involvement Program um, under the under those rules. And as such, um, it's really important for us that we hear from the public on, on all matters related to land use planning. Um, and our meetings follow pretty prescribed formats. This is, this is a much, loosey, much looser meeting than we normally have. Um, but we basically follow three formats depending on what it is that we're hearing. Um, we've talked a little bit about the quasi-judicial hearings where an applicant brings a proposal to us um, they demonstrate how um, they meet the um, criteria in our zoning or subdivision ordinance um, and or um, how they meet the criteria if they're requesting a variance or something to that effect. Um, we hear from the applicant, we hear from the public, and then we close the meeting and discuss amongst ourselves. Most of our meetings are fairly conversational. Um, we try not to... Um, hang too tightly to uh, you know, the Roberts rule structure, but we do impose it as we need to in order to move, uh, move the meeting along. Um, but we, the, a, a critical piece of that is always asking for public input on every decision that we make. Um, then we make a determination based on the criteria um, and how they meet it. Um, and with consideration of um, public testimony present, uh, presented. Um, these determinations are binding on the applicant and they may um, appeal, as we just discussed, to city council and eventually to LUBA um, if they feel the need to. Um, and so part of um, our role with these um, quasi-judicial hearings is because there's an appeal period, we never want to discuss our decision-making process outside of our public meetings. Oftentimes people will ask you, what's the real story behind this or that? And the real story is we heard the information that was presented, we heard the public testimony, and we came to a decision as a council or as a commission. And that's that's the real story. <laughs> um, so that's that's first thing. The second thing is we also hold legislative hearings in which we review code language. Um, for example, something that we did fairly recently um, was we looked at floor area ratio um, to make sure that one of the ways that you can keep development small is not to allow floor area ratio to exceed a certain percentage. That helps us preserve the village village character. Um, and so we came up with a formula for floor area ratio that then was discussed several times and planning commission meetings came up with language that we wanted to add to the zoning ordinance. And then it went to city council, city council approved that language and then it became part of the ordinance. That's the kind of work we're going to be doing a lot of as things come forward in the future. Um, first with the comprehensive plan um, but even before that, we'll be doing more meetings like this, where we take a concept, we discuss it, we open it to the public, we hear from them as our in our role as citizen involvement um, commission, and then we take that information back to the comprehensive plan um, analysis and, and planning portion. So some of the meetings are going to be very free form and, and um, where we're asking for input. Other meetings are going to be far more structured. Um, and that's because we have requirements um, under the land use laws. Um, I think the most important thing that I can impress on you is that our commission business, regardless of whether it's the quasi-judicial or you know, binding stuff or um, legislative or community is only conducted here, <laughs> here in our Zoom meetings or eventually in public. Um, it's only conducted in public and as a body. Individually, we have no authority whatsoever um, unless a member is tasked by the commission to um, perform a duty. For example, Phil is working with a short-term rental um, group 
kind of as a liaison to the planning commission, Lee is going to be on the um, selection committee. Those are the kind of things where they individually have um, some responsibility and authority to act on our behalf. But otherwise, everything we do is right here in a group. Um, we take ex parte contact seriously, and we um, look at uh, and question ex parte contact and bias before each decision that we make to ensure that the public um, is getting as transparent a process as possible. Um, and also we all need to make sure that we comply with the Oregon public meeting law. <laughs> that's that's kind of important. Um, Lee or Phil, do you, did I miss anything? Karen, can I ask another quick question? Sure. Um, I watched the council meeting last time and there was a discussion about liaison for committees. Does the planning commission have a council liaison? Mm -mm. No, just. No, no, we don't. We are independent of the council. Right. And because the council is um, reviews our decisions, whether it's legislative or judicial, um, we definitely, we keep our, our business separate. However, the council can make recommendations or requests that we, um, do some sort of review or, or make some, some sort of legislative change. So we do work together, but basically staff is the conduit that we work through. So, okay. So Scott and or Layla basically is the kind of go between. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cool. Perfect. Yep. Karen? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask about ex party contacts, which in, in my world is is uh, is completely verboten. Um, to, as applied here, does that mean contact with the applicant or representative, or does it mean contact with anyone? For example, some neighbor who has a point of view upon a piece of property that's subject to an application. Um, that, I, that we yeah. don't listen to those things, walk away from the conversation. You listen, listen all you want. Okay. <laughs> Make no promises. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. But I mean, as a judge, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't even listen to yeah. somebody. But, but since if you said we're citizen involvement, uh, organization, then maybe I should be listening to what people in the in the community have to say about it. Um, the, we, we base base all of our decisions on um, in, in public. So I would listen to people and and encourage them to come to the planning commission and, and state their case here because yeah. outside of here, we can't do anything okay. for them uh, individually. Yeah, and I think a good rule of thumb too, Karen, is the distinction that Tom is making right now, which is there's like, I think listening and talking to citizens, particularly about things that are like the comprehensive plan or policy. But when it comes to a specific application, especially an active application, I would err on the side of what you would do likely as a judge, which is Sometimes you can't help it in a small town. People are like, hey, I, you know, but to the best of your ability, it it maintains your objectivity and your ability to make an impartial. Well, you know, I'm tell, I shouldn't be telling a judge this, but <laughs> for the rest of you, if it's a specific land use application, we've been, I tend to advise commissions to err on the side of conservative um, approach to ex parte yeah. contact. So less is more. But about other stuff, absolutely um, sponge it up. Listen to what folks have to say. Yeah, and and the the requirement is we ask whether each person to identify whether you've had any contact with the applicant or the applicant's representative, um, whether you've visited the site, for example, um, and and so as long as you disclose those contacts, and at that time that they're disclosed we can make a determination whether we think that's going to 
um, be too biased. And so we could uh, have you go sit in the audience and, and argue the argue the case without voting on it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Perfect. Yeah, we just disclosure is everything. But again, um, when it comes to when it comes to a specific applicant, um, definitely plug your ears and ask them to not to not to uh, involve you at this moment. <laughs> Any other questions about that? Lee, did you have something you wanted to add? No, I think you've uh, you summed up the introduction to uh, the planning commission really well. I'm sure that our work with LCDC on uh, our DL, is it DLCD? DLCD. There's two, yeah. I'm sure that our activity with them on Wednesday will be uh, very helpful for all of us. Um, I think the last time that Lisa was here, was it's been four years ago now? I think so. It was pre-COVID. COVID for sure. Yeah, pre-COVID. So um, it's bring your questions, bring your questions. Yeah, Frank. Oh, I have a question. Has does any negative decision uh, given by the Planning Commission ever not get appealed? Yes. Oh, okay. Because I because I, 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 there's an appeal process. I was wondering if Planning Commission gets appealed every time there's a negative decision. No, nope. but for the most part, um, the staff does such a thorough job of vetting applications before they come to us that um, I, I don't want to sound like we rubber stamp because we always look at everything carefully. But for the most part, staff doesn't bring an application unless there's a really good um, chance that it will, um, that it meets the, the criteria. Gotcha. Yeah. Good Bill, did you have anything? Oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry. Uh, appeals to the city council, is that de novo or is that on the record? That's up to the council. In any different Did you want to any add individual Layla? case. Okay. Yeah. Did, did you want to add something, Layla? No, it's just affirming. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on how how we do and what we do? Um, I did want to make sure that you all were aware um, that the Oregon. Government Ethics Commission, OGEC, requires a statement of economic interest from each of us every year. Um, if you haven't already received an email um, from, I think the city automatically registers you and you should have received an email, I would hope, um, from OEGC, um, and they call it an SEI filing. It's all done online. Um, it's pretty pretty quick. Um, and there are several trainings available to talk about how to fill out the form. Um, so if you haven't received that email, let Scott know, I guess, or me, I'd be happy to forward it, Layla. Um, and I also have this, the training schedule. I'd be happy to send that um, along too, if you want to. Um, it. I don't think it's a long training. It takes maybe... No, I sent out an email to the Planning Commission a while back that had links to all that so okay. you can if you dig that up you should find it i think i saw that on the jurisdictional contacts it looks like everyone set their accounts up and you have until april 15th to file if you have questions about filing call ogec they're going to be a better bet than me i'm afraid so frank go ahead yeah i i, I did the process it's really simple if you need training for that i'm very concerned <laughs> yes, it's, it really is that simple. It's not complicated at all. There's a couple, handful of questions. Yes, no, no, yes, yeah, boom, done. Yeah. Yeah. The main thing is that the um, we want to be as transparent as possible. And if you do have an interest with someone who may be, bring a, uh, an issue before us, let's just say, yep, I might, I, I might, I, I might have something to do with those people. And then um, again, we look at each case, whether there's whether there's a real bias um, or uh, interest, when that application actually comes before us. Okay, um, if there are no more questions about process or procedure, do we have any updates on what's what's coming up? 
Uh, yeah, next month we have an application for a various request. Oh boy, those are kind of fun. We hardly ever get those. Not very often. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see. Um, they have they haven't responded to the staff report yet that was sent to them. So we'll see if they want to do the variance or not. Okay. Um, and then will the um, transportation plan, the final transportation plan? come come up next month too? Yeah, that's my understanding. Um, they let us know, they'll have the final plan. So as soon as we get that, we'll send a link out to the commission. So y'all can take a look at the final final. And then Kara Hall from Fair and Peers will come and do sort of a summation of, of the process. And then we'll work with our new planner. We'll, our new planner will be here next month, Scott Freganessi and start to talk with the commission about what the next steps are for recommending adoption of the transportation system plan um, to update uh, that chapter of the comprehensive plan. So some next steps on that coming soon. Great. Okay. Any other business we need to talk about? Can I, another quick question about- Questions procedure. are good. Um, for instance, the variance thing that's possibly coming up, if it does come up, Scott, will you give us a heads up or do we do we see it for the first time at the next planning commission meeting? No, we, we generally try to have it at least the Monday before the packet. Okay. So it, it, it has to be reviewed and approved before we, we send it out. Perfect. Cool. Yep. So yeah, we get it roughly a week before the meeting. Um, so you have plenty of time to I've been review it. Friday before, because Lee uh, yelled at me a couple times. But <laughs> I, try, I try to do it the Friday before. That gives you the weekend and a, and a yeah. whole, a couple weekends to look through it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah and I'll clarify, true. we always give it a week in advance, but we try to do it 10 days. <laughs> but I try to do it the Friday before the week in advance. Give you yeah. a little yes. time. Right. So you have plenty of time to review the staff report, review the application, um, look at the ordinance and make sure, you, you know, if if staff, God forbid, misses something um, applicable, then it gives us lots of time to look look at it and make sure that everything is complete. Uh, and you all should have copies. I think Scott put together a pretty solid packet of information for everyone, everything from the ordinance down to the subdivision code. So please do let staff know if there's additional information that you uh, need, but I do think we, we we packaged together everything that was relevant. Yeah. Uh, I'll let staff know now, and speaking only for myself, uh, I, you need to assume that I don't know much of anything about this. So I'm hoping that your reports are at a base level a presentation, like what a variance is. Um, I mean, don't don't assume that at least that, that I'm intelligible in all aspects of what you're going to be doing. I mean, I'll, I'll study hard, but I I rely on good briefing from the lawyers when I'm hearing cases, and so I, I hope you'll pitch it at the right level, at least for me. Ditto with all the de novo talk. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we do use a lot of acronyms. No, no, that's great feedback. <laughs> yep. And, you know, as Karen mentioned, what staff does is we take all the applicable criteria, we tell you what the applicable criteria is, and then our findings um, really reflect back why or why not. Um, and then at the end, there's a really nice, neat summary of that. I would welcome you to look at maybe some past dis, uh, staff reports. Those are all available on the city's website. And if from that you have additional feedback for us, um, I would certainly welcome that. But duly noted, and we will um, do our best to make sure. I always like to think that anybody should be able to pick this up and read it and understand it. Yes, be gentle with us. <laughs> we'll do our best. You'll we'll start fine. learning a lot of acronyms, though. Oh, I know. My God, I couldn't even remember UGB. 
Now you'll never forget. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, questions are always good. And um, we do want to make sure that everything is clear. And we do go through the staff report fairly rigorously um, on as uh, until you feel like you're up to speed, you know, we'll we'll slow things down as much as we need to, to make sure that um, everything is perfectly clear. Last thing we want to do is make decisions on stuff that we don't understand. So um, anything else today? Are we allowed to talk between us? Um, for instance, could I call Tom and ask him a question about the law? Yes, you don't you don't have the same limitations as say someone on city council does. Okay. Um, so by all means. Now, if it's an active land use application, as Karen said, all deliberations are done in public. So the answer to that question would be no. <laughs> But if you just want to call Tom and ask him a question about something, yes. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, the Planning Commission, they can get legal as much as planning. Um, and Tom may know something about that, for instance. You're, you're assuming way too much here, John. About... <laughs> well, I'm trying not to. huge. I, um, we- just don't want to run afoul of the Oregon public meeting law, so I wouldn't try to discuss anything um, pertinent to a particular application or to a decision that right. we're about to make. Um, but um, if you have questions about policy or questions about process or just generally, you know, generally, the reality is generally, it's, it's probably a question that Scott or Layla most likely can answer because it's going to be, even if it's a legal question, it's going to be a question about um, procedure or timing or schedule. And they would have heard it before. <laughs> and they probably yeah. have heard it before. So yeah. um, we're at the ready to assist. Yeah. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> yeah. Well, John, you've just done uh, it. I was going to say this was a record meeting. We were done in less than an hour, but we've gone over by a minute. So thank <laughs> Looking up now. Yep. We, we still Get have we it. still have a record to beat. <laughs> yeah. I, I, um, if there's anything else, let's let's air it now. Otherwise, I would I would uh, adjourn the meeting. Cool. Hearing Who's that. Adjourned? Yep. Who said that? Right. Oh. And I, I'm sorry. I I didn't understand what what it was you said, Phil. Move to adjourn. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. We are adjourned. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. See you all on Wednesday, maybe. I don't know how how that's going to go. Looking forward to meeting with you guys.